Hey everybody, today we are looking at chapter 5, section 3, which is medians and altitudes of triangles. First thing we need to know is what a median is. A median is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of the triangle, which is right here at point C, and the midpoint of the opposite side, which is over here at point D. Okay, so it's vertex to midpoint is going to be our medians. Our medians are concurrent, so again, that means that they meet in one point, and that one point is called the centroid. A little bit of a fun fact about the centroid is it is also called the center of gravity um, because if you were to cut out a triangle out of cardstock or heavier weight paper, if you find the centroid of that, then if you put your the triangle like on the tip of your pencil at the centroid, it will be balanced. So it's kind of cool. Um, also, the centroid, like your in-center, is always going to be inside the triangle. All right, our theorem for our centroid is that the distance from the vertex of the triangle to the centroid is two-thirds of the length of the entire median. So if this is two-thirds, let, let me write in a different color, um, of the length, then that makes this one third of the length. Okay. Um, and one thing that I kind of want to focus on here is that if I know this length and this length, this one is going to be half of this one. Because when we look at the distance, uh, BP being two thirds, well, if we take two thirds and we divide it by two, we get one third. Okay. So this piece from the centroid to the midpoint is going to be half the length of the centroid to, or excuse me, yeah, the centroid to the vertex, okay? But when we compare it to the entire median, it's a third of the whole median, and this is two-thirds of the whole median. Um, so I know right now that that might be a little bit confusing. We're going to do some examples with it here in just a sec. So let's take a look. Um, here, I am told that SP is 16 okay and i want to know what sm is which is this whole the whole length of the whole median okay i know that these are medians because i know that these are all midpoints because they are congruent here so i'm going vertex to a midpoint so this is the whole median so two ways that i can do this i know that um sp is two-thirds of SM. All right, so SP is 16. And then I can multiply both sides by three halves, which is the reciprocal. All right, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. The other, not 2M, SM. Okay, the other way that I can do this is easier than this, okay? I realize that if this is 16, this is my two-thirds piece because it runs from my vertex to the centroid, okay? That means that this here is my one-third piece. Remember that this piece is going to be half of this piece. So I'm going to take 16 divided by 2, and I'm going to get 8. 8 plus 16 is 24, okay? So we do we can do it either way um but i feel like just going oh hey this divided by two add them together that's probably going to be a little bit easier for you all right so then let's take a look at the next one we're told that lp is nine so lp right here is nine and i want to find the whole thing which is lt so again i know that lp is my one third piece so if i do this the long way i know that lp is one third of lt which is the whole median okay so lp is nine is one third of lt i can multiply here both sides by three 27 is lt all right so or i can look at it okay i know that this is one third so this is two thirds. Well, if this is one third, it's half of this one. So I know that this is nine times two, which is 18. Add them together, I get 27. All right, then the last one that we're gonna look at is I'm told RN is 33 and I wanna know PN. So remember that again, I know that PN 
is a third of the whole thing because it goes from the centroid to the midpoint. So it's, this is going to be a third of Rn. So Pn is a third of 33. So Pn is 11. Okay. And then that would make this here 22 because it would be doubled. Added together, we get 33. Um, or in your head, you can just go, okay, if I'm looking for the one third piece, I'm taking that 33 and I'm dividing it by three. Okay. Um, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write them down now. All right, next thing that we're looking for here is we are looking for where, basically where the centroid is. So we want to show, um, we're drawing a diagram for a piece of a mobile. So the mobiles are the things that like half the time hang above like the little baby cribs. Um, so we want it to be balanced and we want that triangle to be balanced. Well, remember that your center of gravity is the centroid. So we want to find the medians, which means that we're looking for the midpoint of each side. All right. So that means we're going to be looking for some midpoints and doing some midpoint formulas. So if I find the midpoint of QR, all right, remember that our midpoint formula is that we are adding our x's dividing by 2. So 0 plus 6 divided by 2, adding our y's dividing by 2, so 8 plus 4 divided by 2. So this midpoint here is going to be 6 over 2, which is 3. 8 plus 4 is 12 over 2, which is 6. So 3, 6 is right here. All right, then we can look at the midpoint for QP. And we have adding our X's again, we're going to add 0 and 3 divided by 2. And then we have 8 and 0, 8 plus 0 divided by 2. All right, this is going to give us 3 halves. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So... We're going to go over one and a half, up four. So this is the other one. And then we have one more midpoint of PR. Add our X's again. So six plus three, divide by two. And then add our Y's, four plus zero, divide by two. So this is going to give us six plus three is nine. So that's nine halves, which is four and a half. And four divided by two is two. So we're going to go over four and a half, up two. Here's our other midpoint. So now to find our um, centroid, all we're going to do is go from the vertex to the opposite side, okay, to that midpoint. So from the vertex to the midpoint, from the vertex to the midpoint. Oh, that got a little crooked. Um, and then we just look to see where they intersect. So you should be able to notice that we are intersecting right here at 3, 4. So our centroid is at the point 3, 4. Okay? So this is our answer. So again, finding the midpoint of each side and then drawing the segment that connects the vertex and the midpoint. All right, questions about that, go ahead and write it down now. The next thing we're going to look at is an altitude. An altitude is a perpendicular segment that starts at a vertex and goes perpendicular to the opposite side. Another word for altitude that you have used in the past is the height of the triangle. Okay, so when we look at our altitudes, our altitudes can be three different places. And inside the triangle, outside the triangle, which we're going to see when we have obtuse triangles, and when we have a right triangle, the altitude is a side of the triangle because we come from the vertex and the side is already perpendicular to the opposite side. So our altitudes are also concurrent. Again, they meet at one point and their point of concurrency is called the orthocenter. All right. The only thing we know about an orthocenter, the only thing we're going to work with with the orthocenter is where it's located. Okay, I'm not going to, there's no like how it's like one third, two third or 
um, you know, equidistant to angles or to sides. None of that applies to the orthocenter. It's just, hey, where is it? Okay, so that's all we're going to be looking at here. And our orthocenters can be located in an acute triangle. It will always be inside. A right triangle, so this is inside. A right triangle will always be on the triangle at the vertex of the right angle. And your obtuse triangle will always be outside. Okay, and chances are like this altitude here, you start from the vertex, go perpendicular to the opposite side, but you're going to have to extend it in the opposite direction in order to get where your intersection actually lies. So let's take a look. Here I'm ha I have a uh, triangle JKL with these coordinates. So J is at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. So here's J. K is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And L is at 2, 2. All right. So we're going to draw our triangle. Okay. And I want to find the orthocenter. So when we're finding the orthocenter, Okay, I have a couple of different things that I need to do. I know that I need to start from the vertex and go perpendicular to the opposite side. So what you want to look for is any sides that are horizontal or vertical because you know that those perpendiculars are easy. So here I have a horizontal side. I know that I have to go vertical to it to be perpendicular. So if I can go from K straight down and I will adjust that so it's actually on the line here okay this is going to be perpendicular to this side here all right so this is where one altitude lies then I'm going to take a look at my next side here so what I want to do is what do I need to know about perpendicular sides I know that their slopes are negative reciprocals of one another. So what that means is that I need to find the slope of any sides that are not horizontal or vertical. Okay, so I'm going to find the slope of JK, which remember we subtract our Y's. So I'm going to start with J and subtract K. So I'm going to do 2 minus 6 and then negative four minus a negative two. So we subtract our y's over our subtracted x's. So this is gonna be negative four over negative two, which is two. So that means that if I need a perpendicular slope, I want the negative reciprocal. So it's gonna be a negative one half. Okay, so I found the slope of jk. That means I wanna start from L because I want to go from the vertex perpendicular to that side. I want to start from L and do a slope of negative one half. So I'm going to go up one, left two, up one, left two, up one, left two. Okay, there's my perpendicular line. So I know that this is here simply because those two slopes are going to be negative reciprocals. Now, can you do the third side? Absolutely, okay? Um, but do you have to? No, because you know all three are going to intersect in one place. So the orthocenter here is going to be located at negative 2, 4. Okay, you can always do the third side just or the third altitude to see if you are correct. Okay, questions on that? Go ahead and write that down. So what I want you to do right now is pause your video and fill in all this information. I want you to tell me what kinds of lines there are, whether they're angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, altitudes, medians, any of that, what the name is of the point, where it can be located, and what do you know about it in relation to the rest of the triangle. So please go ahead and pause your video and do that now. Okay, so this puts everything together that we've done in the last two sections. Please go ahead and check through this. 
see if you have any questions. If you do, write it down and make sure that you ask me the next time I see you in class. Have a great night.